In this video, we will demonstrate the operation of the Hawk Titrolab system for pH and total acidity. pH is a key parameter for many foodstuffs, with a significant influence on storage, appearance, and taste. The acid content has a direct effect on the color and taste of the food. It is important to maintain consistency in all of these areas. Hawk's Titrolab for pH and total acidity is available in four different sales versions. Dairy products, wine, tomato sauce and tomato products, and brine. Our demonstration today will specifically be using the pH and acidity in milk instrument. The instrument should be assembled and ready for operation. Here is the list of all components required to run a test. In this demonstration, we will use a 0.04 normal sulfuric acid standard to show you how to operate the instrument and test its performance. This standard will work with all four models of the pH and acidity instrument. We will use 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide as the titrant in this demonstration. Some methods use 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide titrant. This will also work, but the expected results will be different. In this video, the results for 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide will also be shown. Remove the pH electrode storage bottle. Secure the dispensing tube to the electrode with the included O-ring. The end of the dispensing tip should terminate just above the end of the pH electrode. Make sure all the fittings are secure as this can result in leakage of air or titrant and cause errors in your measurement. First we will prime the burette. This should be done at the beginning of each day. Check that the bottle of sodium hydroxide is not empty and make sure a waste beaker is under the electrode. Now turn on the instrument. Select manual activation. Burette. And empty. The piston inside the burette will travel up. When the burette has stopped, press fill. Repeat the empty and fill procedure to ensure all the tubes are filled with fresh titrant. We will now calibrate the electrode using pH 4 and 7 buffers. For best results, this should be done at least once a day. Pour about 10 milliliters of pH 4 buffer into a titration cell. Add a magnetic stir bar. Rinse the pH electrode over a waste beaker. Lower the electrode into the buffer. Be sure the electrode bulb is completely immersed in the buffer. Select pH calibration and then press the check mark to start the calibration. Following successful acceptance of the first calibration, begin preparing the second buffer. Prepare the pH 7 buffer the same way you prepared the pH 4 buffer.
and lower the pH electrode into the buffer, making sure the end of the pH electrode is completely immersed in the buffer. Select Next Point and press the check mark to begin measuring the pH 7 buffer. Following successful calibration, select End Calibration and press the check mark to finish the calibration. The results of the calibration are stored and you can use the right arrow key to see the results of the calibration. Press the check mark to quit the calibration. You are now ready to measure your sample. For all titration models, we are going to use 10 milliliters of 0.04 normal sulfuric acid standard. Some titration models prompt you for a weight instead of a volume, in which case you will enter 10 grams, since 10 milliliters weighs about 10 grams. Add 10 milliliters of 0.04 normal sulfuric acid standard to the titration cell and place the cell in the stir stand. Rinse the pH electrode with clean water. Add a stir bar to the titration cell. Lower the electrode into the titration cell. Make sure the entire pH bulb is immersed into the sample and not hitting the stir bar. When you have determined the proper depth of immersion, you can adjust the O-ring on the stir stand to help quickly locate the proper depth. Select Analyze pH and Acidity and press the check mark to start the analysis. The progress of the titration is displayed on the screen. The final result is displayed when the titration is complete. In this case, we got 0.37 grams lactic acid per 100 milliliters with a pH of 1.83. Press OK to confirm the result. The expected result depends on your model in units. This table shows the expected range of results for each model in unit. If your result is not within the expected range, you should first try repeating the titration. The most common cause of error are loose fittings and standards that have drifted outside the acceptable range. When working properly, the TitraLab titrators should perform fast and accurately.